I think what we've uh, seen given current trends and, and perhaps um, given subpar anemic growth out of the advanced economies that we will see some slightly less uh, impressive growth rates coming out of China and India particularly in the next few years but at the same time we predict upwards of 7.5 to 8 percent growth uh, annual growth between 2010 and 2015 uh, for China and India which obviously given the size of those economies mm -hmm. will have a tremendous impact on their overall uh, share of global output. Um, we predict that by 2015 the BRICS share of global output as a whole will increase from around 15 percent to almost 20 percent, right. touching 20 percent around 19.8 percent, which obviously has significant implications uh, for the partners, the commercial partners that the BRICS have uh, globally. Okay, obviously let's talk about BRIC-African relations because that's boosted Africa's profile in exposure in investment terms and in FDI terms. Your outlook for the next five years for BRIC-Africa relations and uh, the kind of numbers we're going to see in terms of trade expected to grow threefold? So what we predict based once again on trend based what we've seen since 2000 where BRIC Africa trade was in the, in, in the region of around 20 billion increasing to 180 billion by 2008 dropping quite substantially to around 150 billion in 2009 and we see that will pick up again this year. We predict that by 2015 BRIC Africa trade as a whole will exceed 500 billion dollars. It will be around 530 billion dollars led primarily by China Africa trade mm -hmm. which we see reaching or at least touching around 350 billion dollars by 2015 which is obviously a significant increase as such we think that these volumes will mean that the BRICS share of Africa's total trade will increase from around a quarter to around one third in the next five years um, which does present uh, tremendous growth opportunities particularly within a realm of subpar growth uh, within the advanced world. And in terms of uh, FDI stocks to Africa, both India and China are now lead investors on the African continent. What sort of figures are we going to see in terms of more investment coming through? I think conservatively you can expect a tripling of the BRICS FDI stock in Africa. Currently it's very difficult to pin exact numbers on how much FDI the BRICS have in Africa given a, a range of variables and different ways of measuring FDI as a whole. But I think conservatively we can say that by 2015 the BRICS will have an FDI stock in Africa of in the region of 150 billion dollars. Uh, once again we see China as being uh, the lead in terms of the, the largest FDI stock in the continent and growth there will be driven by mm -hmm. investments primarily in resources but beyond investments unlocking Africa's consumer growth. Uh, we've seen recently uh, Russia's telecoms firm Vimplecom announcing an intended deal almost of seven billion dollars to buy into the Egyptian uh, telecoms firm Morascom through weather investments. Uh, we've seen Vale from Brazil announce plans to invest upwards of 20 billion dollars in Africa over the next five years. And of course we've seen some significant Indian private sector involvement on the continent. So we see this ramping up quite substantially in the next two to three years and I think quite conservatively the BRICS will have a share of, of Africa's FDI stock which will strongly outpace what it currently has. In terms of ten tangible gains for Africa, we're also hearing that in the next five years, Africa is poised to see GDP figures increasing, that we're likely to see the value of Africa's economies grow from 1.6 trillion to 2.6 trillion. Will that be a function of the involvement of BRIC countries? It'll be partially a function of the involvement of the BRICS. I think a lot of that growth is happening given Africa's very strong independent macroeconomic fundamentals. I think conservatively we once again are predicting that Africa's uh, consumer or purchasing power in the next five years will increase by, by around 30 percent. Um, this is based on, on pure demographics. We're seeing the fact that Africa's um, population is looked to, to extend by 120 million people in the next five years. 80 million people will be added to the African workforce in the next five years as well. We're seeing huge urbanization rates. Africa has the highest urbanization rates on the, on the planet. Uh, East African urbanization rates are almost triple those of Southeast Asia. So these trends are all developing to provide some very nourishing avenues for growth within the African context. Surely the amount of investment, the growth in trade with the BRICS will add positive momentum to that outlook. But obviously Africa's fundamentals, um, while intricately tied to the fundamentals of the BRICS, are also growing on their own account. And of course the advanced economy integration in Africa we see ramping up quite significantly as well. But it doesn't take away from the fact, uh, Simon, that Africa still has some limitations in the area of infrastructure, for instance in the area of education and skills in terms of supporting the growth of this uh, African middle class in terms of global access to trade networks. The growth that you project for Africa, which regions are likely to be the ones that grow the fastest? 
I think th there's no uh, fixed answer for that. I think you, you're looking at certain regions have uh, strongly uh, allowed the possibility of regional integration and as such they present very compelling avenues for foreign direct investment and more holistic growth. So the East African community is an easy pick in that sense. But then once again you've got to look at countries which have the scale, which have natural resources and which have the demographic um, the ability to, to reap the demographic dividend going forward which will allow them to unlock this consumer growth. So obviously countries like Nigeria, like Egypt, like Ethiopia which has been growing very strongly in recent years are looking to perhaps advance the most rapidly. Then once again you need to look at economies that have recently uh, gained access to, to significant natural resources such as Ghana and Uganda. So across the board there's a wide variety of countries that will benefit from this nourishment um, and there's no fixed answer yet. Uh, the countries that are able to attract investment, that are able to fundamentally secure macroeconomic fundamentals to, to improve business climates will of course be elevated in, in this sense. But the BRIC fundamentals, largely speaking, um, are attracted to A, the resource uh, angle that Africa has, B, the ability to tap into consumer markets, and C, the strategic potential that African countries have on a global strategic and multilateral stage. And there you're looking at countries, South Africa prominently, Nigeria very prominent, um, Kenya prominent, Egypt prominent. And I think it, it's on those three levels that African countries for the next five years will be increasingly measured.